Hey everyone, this is Ben with Jack Wolf Knives, and we are going to disassemble a gunslinger jack, remove the pocket clip, and install the included pocket clip plug. We're going to need some tools, and I'll show you up front what we're going to need. You don't need these exact tools, but things that will accomplish the same. So I've got some fancy stuff. It doesn't need to be fancy. This is a bit driver. Just another word for a screwdriver that holds removable quarter inch bits. This is made from titanium by Audacious Concepts out of Finland. You will need some bits. This is the bit bar two from Big Idea Design. T10, T8, and T6 is what we're gonna need. You'll need potentially two T10s, one T8 and one T6. I'll show you why you need two T10s here soon. Alcohol pads, I only buy the BD ones. All the other ones that I've ever come across don't compare. Your favorite oil, I don't really think it matters what you use. I like Nano Oil 85 weight because it seems to stay where you put it. <clears throat> a secondary screwdriver for tweaking the pivot or breaking the Loctite initially. Some thread locker. I recommend Loctite Purple, AKA Loctite 222, which is meant for fasteners smaller than a quarter inch in diameter and that's about it so let's just look at the knife real quick you'll notice that we've got some visible hardware two scale screws here those are t8s a pivot screw that's a t10 there's a scale crew here scale screw here that's a t8 and there's one underneath the pocket clip that you cannot access there's a T10 pivot screw here, and this is a T8 for the lock bar insert. There's no reason to remove this really at all, unless you had to replace the lock bar insert, which would happen after a really, really long period of use. So let's get started. So the first thing we wanna do is remove this scale. Now, like I said, we're not gonna start on this side because the clip is in the way. So we're gonna start on this side. Now, just be mindful. And by the way, this tray is from Tinker Force. I really like it. It's 3D printed polymer with a cork insert and it provides like nice traction. So first thing we'll do is remove the scale. And so I'm gonna need T8. So we'll get T8, which is here. These bits are by Vera, which is spelled W-E-R-A. I also recommend Weha, or I guess it would be Viha. Uh, these are all made in Germany, these bits. But you can see Torx 8. So T8 means Torx 8. So I'm gonna install it in my driver. Now I'm gonna use downward pressure here because this is gonna wanna teeter. And we don't want that to be unstable. So just some downward pressure. Carefully line up your bit into the Torx shape in the fastener and remove the fastener. I like to unscrew until I hear it click a couple times. That's how I know it's out. And there is our titanium T8 fastener. Okay. Let's do the other one. Just gently insert the bit till you get it lined up. Apply some downward pressure and unscrew the fastener. Hear those clicks. We know it's backed all the way out. There we go. Now sometimes your scale material will come out easily sometimes not so easily. In the case of this one, it's kind of firmly in there. 
This kind of seems odd, but this is how you do it. Just make sure you have a soft surface. If you need to put down a towel or something, that'd be great, but we're going to strike the titanium against our surface, which is going to pop the scale out. Just like that. No damage done. I've done it, I don't know, dozens of times. Never had a problem. And it works like a charm. See our parts are internally numbered. 806, 806. Now that we have our scale out, we'll put it to the side. Now we have three fasteners we're gonna have to remove. We've got these two, they're T6, and we've got a T10 pivot. So I don't think it really matters what order we go in. I'm gonna recommend we remove, let's remove the pivot. So here we go. So I'm gonna need one and potentially one more T10. So I'll take them both out. And the first thing I'm gonna try is see if I can get it out without involving a heat gun and without involving two screwdrivers. If you wanna play this safe, just involve a heat gun from the beginning. You can use a blow dryer or you can get a proper heat gun from Amazon or that's where I would look. I bought mine from Uline because I buy supplies from there. But ultimately, we wanna remove this screw and this screw has thread locker applied to it. So that thread locker is basically, it's not the same as this, it's whatever they use at the factory, but it works the same way. It's an adhesive. So in order to unscrew this, we have to break that adhesive, we have to break the bond. So what I recommend here, and be very careful doing this part, because if <clears throat> you use force and don't apply your pressure straight down, you can strip the bit or even worse, jump out of the bit and scratch the titanium. And I'm not able to repair that. You'd have to find a third party to re-blast your titanium parts in order to remove that scratch. So here we go. So I'm gonna line up the bit and I'm going to push down and twist. Now I'm turning, but I very well might just be spinning the whole pivot assembly because this is a free spinning pivot. So that means the two parts that are joined, the entire assembly is spinning inside this bore. And that's not going to loosen the one screw. So we're gonna have to use a second screwdriver. I really recommend a stubby like this one from Vera, but you can make this work with like an, like an not an Allen key because it's Torx, but there's several ways to do this. If you want to use what I'm using, get a stubby screwdriver like this. So because we're trying to remove this one and I'm left-handed, I'm going to take what is my support screwdriver and I'm gonna line it up, line up my screw, and I'm gonna put it in my hand like this, and I'm gonna hold it firmly like this. I wanna reiterate, you wanna hold this firmly. And I'm gonna take my screwdriver here, and I'm gonna put it in, and now I'm twisting this one. And by doing that, I've held this screw in place, and I've isolated this screw, as you saw, it backed out. Didn't do any damage to my titanium. It wasn't very difficult. It's all about having the right tools for the job. So we're gonna back this out till it clicks. There it goes. There's our screw. You can see there's some dried Loctite on there. We're gonna address that momentarily. Put our screw in there. <clears throat> now we're going to transition to our T6, which is this one. T6. 
T6. And we're going to remove these. So just line it up until it seats. Remember, downward pressure and steady it. And then, boom, out comes the screw. Looks like that. Now, if you gouge up your hardware or lose hardware, well, I have extras, of course, but just do your best and try not to damage or lose anything. All right, this one's out. Now, just like that. If it doesn't pop off easily, just be gentle when taking everything apart. And ultimately, you should be able to separate the scale. Now, I wanna show you guys some parts. Here's the stop pin. I recommend just taking this out and setting it aside. Inside this bore is, it's technically called a thrust washer. It's really um, a steel insert that the ceramic ball bearing rides on and it's just setting in there. There's nothing holding it in by mechanical force. See if I can get it out. You don't, I don't like to leave these pieces in necessarily because that's how you can accidentally drop things on the floor. So there's our thrust washer, put that here. Now this scale is completely stripped. I'll show you that. Let's set that aside. All right, now move this into position. We've got our caged ceramic bearing. Looks like that. I want to set this aside. We've got our blade here. That's our detent hole and our, you can see the track where the detent ball glides. And this is called our lock face. I'm going to set this aside. Okay, now just some things to note about this assembly here. We don't need to disassemble the backspacer and we don't need to disassemble the other scale in order to switch the clip because we can access the pocket clip screw there. I will, however, recommend that you remove the pivot screw and this um, bearing assembly. So here's the pivot screw, and there's, the, it's kind of camouflaged in here, but there's the bearing assembly, and there's the thrust washer. If any of my terminology is wrong, I apologize. So here we go. Now, just so you guys know, when this piece was on top, and those two T6 screws, these ones, they are threaded into these two holes. So the same is true on the reverse side. If I was to remove the carbon fiber scale and back out those two T6s, that would free the pivot. There's also these two pins here and here, and those are used for alignment. And I could probably get them out, but I don't see any reason to do that. Just be mindful that if you turn this over, these pins could drop out. So try not to lose those. They just align the scale here with the backspacer, with this hole here and this hole here. So these two holes are the screw holes, the two T6 screws, these two holes are for alignment, and these two holes, excuse me, these are the scale screws, 
These are the alignment pins and these are the T6 body screws. That's the stop pin bore. All right, hopefully that all makes sense. The next step is going to be to remove the pocket clip. So we're gonna need our T8 again. So we're gonna remove the T6, grab our T8, and just like before, we're gonna apply some downward pressure to keep this from rocking. And we're gonna gently put our bit into there and get it seated. Push down and turn. It does require some force, just take your time. If you find yourself getting frustrated, put this stuff down, take a deep breath. So here's our pocket clip screw and you'll notice that it is the same screw as the scale screws. So let's set that aside. Okay, now our pocket clip can come free. Just kind of give it a wiggle and off it comes. Easy peasy. And what this looks like now is as such. Now we need our pocket clip plug, which is this. Out it comes, and you'll notice the bottom of it looks a lot like the bottom of your pocket clip. So, now we're gonna turn this over. So be mindful if those alignment pins roll out of there. Turn this over. We're gonna put our, now when you look at this pocket clip plug, there's a chamfer on it right there. And that's gonna line up with the bottom of the bottom bolster, which should be more or less evident. Kind of boom, just like that. Finds its little sweet spot. Now be careful turning it over. If you look inside, you'll see the post that's attached to the bottom of that plug. And now, because we don't have a pocket clip anymore, we can get some better stabilization. I'm just gonna take this screw and Drop it in there. We still have our T8. Just kind of line it up. The good thing is if you scratch this one, no one will ever see it. Okay, I got it all lined up. And just screw it down until it stops and give it like another, just a little something. Don't over torque the heck out of it. It's not necessary. Flip it over, take a look at it. Make sure it looks good. Sure looks good to me. <clears throat> now that our plug is installed, we're just gonna do everything in reverse. And just one thing to note, our backspacer is also numbered. I believe these are ground as an assembly the scales, the backspacer, and the scales, and so non-interchangeable parts, just like on the slip joints. That's how they're getting this amazing seamless transition between materials. So, but I digress. <clears throat> um, one thing I've learned is that if you want to assist in keeping the thrust washer in the spot, you can add a small drop of oil in here, just like that. We're also gonna need our... Now, one thing to mention about this pivot assembly is this is one piece. You cannot separate this barrel from this screw head. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna put it up through this bore and add one little drop of oil on this shaft be 
because that's where our blade will pivot. Now, if we take a look at our thrust washer, see if I can show you this. There is a slight uh, line in the middle of the thrust washer where the bearing has begun to kind of carve a little track. It's not 100% necessary that you put these in the same way every time, but I do recommend you try to do that. Um, if you look at your thrust washer carefully, you should be able to see where the bearing has been riding. I don't know if this camera is going to get it. It's hard to show. There it is. All right. So now that we have the post in, we're just going to drop that down like that. We need our stop pin. I've forgotten to take this step more than once. Let's get our stop pin right here. Um, also want to mention that this stop pin is a little longer than these two alignment pins. So they're not all interchangeable. These two are the same size, but this stop pin is a little bit longer. So the stop pin has to stay the stop pin. So we're gonna put that in like that, okay? Another thing I recommend doing at this juncture is going to be to lubricate the detent ball. If this gets dry and then there's just the littlest bit of debris on it, you'll feel a dragging feeling as the blade rotates open and closed. So just get a little bit of oil right on the ball. And if you can put even less than I did, that wouldn't be so bad. Let's get a little bit of that up. There we go, I like that. Now we've got our caged bearings, and as far as I know, it does not matter which way you put these in, but I would just recommend installing things the same way every time if you can. This bearing, there's a flat part of the bronze, and then there's a part of the bronze that's kind of hollowed out. I like to, we'll call that the open side, I like to put the open side outwards. And I just remember open out. So take the open side, put it outwards like that. All right. At this point too, if you wanna take something that's not scratchy, this is the cap from my oil and just kinda spin this around a little bit. Just kinda move some of that oil around that we put on our, underneath our thrust washer and on the shank of the screw just helps distribute that a little bit better. All right, next thing that's going on is our blade. If you have any amount of doubt with your skill set here, it would not hurt to tape this blade with some blue tape. In fact, I probably should have done it. So do as I say, not as I do, right? Don't we say that a lot as parents? So this is going to go here. Um, I don't push the lock bar down and roll it. I just kind of leave it in the open position like that. It seems to work great. Now we're just doing the reverse of what we had before. I like to take this opportunity to put just a drop of oil there and put down our bearing. Remember, open out like so. This video is gonna be long, but that's just the way I do it. Now, <clears throat> there's a couple ways we can go about this next step. We can add oil here and put the washer in, the thrust washer, or you can just put the thrust washer right on top of the bearing but I will do the reverse of what we did the first time and put just a tiny drop of oil there to create sort of an adhesive effect. See, it's still there. All right, so this is the hole that the stop pin is gonna go into. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install this scale back onto the knife so just kind of line everything up like that.
looks about right. And I like to start with this middle T6 here. And that's a T8, so we're moving down to T6. I recommend screwing this down about 90% of the way. Because if you tighten this down real tight, sometimes it makes it harder to get these down correctly. Sorry for all the beeps and bongs back there. All right, so, so far so good. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna lock tight our pivot. So first, I want us to clean the crud off this. We're gonna take our alcohol wipe. And we're going to just sort of clean these threads off the best you can. Doesn't have to be spotless, but you want to get the crud off it. So I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to give that a moment to dry. Now we've also got some crud. I don't, crud is not a very technical term, right? We have dried Loctite. So I'm just going to take my alcohol wipe and get in that pivot and just give it a little twist. I also had some oil on the titanium, so it gives us a chance to wipe that off. Let that dry for a second. Use my towel here. Have a cleaning cloth, an orange one included with your knife. That would work great for all this. Kind of make a little point out of it and get it in there, give it a little twist. All right, now we're ready to do Loctite. So I like, the way I like to do this is I get a paper towel and I'm gonna put some Loctite on the paper towel and then dip the threads into it. So, uh, and sometimes that Loctite will soak through the paper towel, so I folded it over. And this stuff needs to be shaken for sure. See that? Just a little bit. You don't have to drown it for sure. See if I can get that to focus. I think that looks good. So I'm gonna move our towel out of the way. Get this in here and just go slowly. Got that lined up. Now we need our T10. Get it down just until you feel it stop. And we're gonna stop here and now we're gonna install our other scale and then we're gonna set this pivot. So I wanna make sure that I come back to my two T6s here and here and make sure they're tight. And 
Uh, word of caution, you do not have to crank the ever living you know what out of these because you can actually bust the heads of the screws right off. So just till it stops and then a little bit more. And you'll know you're all good if the spine of your handle, the backspacer, doesn't have any gaps on either side. All right, let's do our scale now. Now, remember the scale was a bit of a press fit, so it might not just drop right in. So when you line this up, just make sure it lines up. Don't have it hanging off the back and don't have it hanging off the front. Just kind of center it with your fingers and then push it in. This one kind of fell right into place, so that's good. Now we need our last two screws, our T8s. This is the T8. If you're never sure by looking at it, they're always marked. Turn the blade away from me. And just carefully line up the head of your bit driver. Go backwards until a click and then in. And again, you don't have to over tighten the heck out of these. You'll know when you feel it stop. Boom, there we go. We've got our scale reinstalled. Our alignment looks good. Last thing we have to do is set our pivot. So I'm gonna disengage the lock bar and close it. And as you can see, we're not centered and that's because our pivot's too loose. So we're gonna tighten this and force our blade into centering. Another thing you can do is put it in the lock position and give it a wiggle. And if you feel movement in the pivot area, you know you're too loose. So I like to rest it like this. Now the camera is pointing down at an angle I'm not perfectly centered under the lens. So this may throw off what you're seeing on your screen as far as centering is concerned, but I'll just walk you through this. So this is a T8. We need to take it out and go back to the T10. So here's this. And I'm gonna hold this here and I'm going to put this screw driver into the screw and I'm gonna turn it and watch the blade move. And you don't need to over tighten this thing. We're gonna go until we get resistance and the blade centers. I think that's good right there. That looks beautiful. Beautiful. So now I'm gonna feel the action. Feels nice and smooth. Put it into the lock position. No blade play. That's it. Excellent. Now that this pivot has been set with Loctite, we need to let it cure. So absolutely resist the temptation to flick this knife open and closed a bunch of times. So let this sit for 24 hours. And that is how you install your pocket clip plug. Now, if I can do it, I'm confident that any of you guys can do it. However, if you feel uncomfortable with this at all, and you want me to do it, just reach out to me. I'll make arrangements for you to send me your knife, and I'll do it for you. If you get through it, and you're halfway through, and you're just frustrated, and you got a bag of parts, well, you can send me that too. But I do want to encourage you to learn to do this. Um, it's a small investment in good tools, but once you master this with confidence, you'll have the capability to work on other knives in your collection. This is Ben with Jack Wolf Knives, the Gunslinger Jack, pocket clip delete, plug installation. Take care.